One thing that's really specific about art handling is that when you move an object, it's, the, it's the, one of the most riskiest times to an object's life. So that's why we have cer certain set of principles and guidelines that help us. Mm -hmm. Most conservation happens is preventative conservation. So working in art galleries and art museums, historical societies, archives, and it's all about preventing damage. So one of the basic principles is always keep handling to a minimum. So it, like I said, handling an object increases the risk of damage to that object. Planning, you know, planning your move. First, assess the object. How, how should the object be moved? Can it be moved safely? So you want to look at, is it fragile? Is it large? Is it heavy? Which way am I going to move the object or the route? Do I need to move it on a trolley or can I carry it or do I need two people? <coughs> and, you, you know, and sometimes it takes more than one person to plan to carry a painting this big because you might need to go through several doors and you need to get a colleague to come with you to open the doors because you're not going to like push it with your, with your backside like you might do getting into your house or doing shopping. These are the, the basic principles of moving artefacts and artworks is to always use two hands and to always pick up one object at a time. Sometimes we don't, carry, we, we don't carry an object just like this. You know, sometimes we want to put the objects on trolleys because it removes the risk of tripping and dropping that thing. Um, other things, if you feel like here, you might want to put objects in padded boxes to carry them upstairs as well. Just to, uh, once again, we're just removing a risk to the objects. Oversized <laughs> objects will carry even a third person just to act as a spotter or even a large format painting. You know, if you're going through doorways or alcoves, you know, have a third person who can just um, pay attention to what's happening around. We're all really aware nowadays of bending and lifting and using our legs, but one thing that we isn't quite often taught is doing this. This action is, is not good. Twisting it like that, that's when things can go really awry. So when you're doing just this, and then it's like that. So here's a painting trolley stacked with artworks. We often do need to stack paintings because in installation period, when you need to, you know, you do your layout and then you need to clear a space, you'll need to stack the paintings <laughs> to get enough space up. The theory is you generally can stack paintings and it's face to face, and back to back. It's only face to face when the, the painted surface or the artwork surface is um, not solid, where it's intact and it's strong. You know, say if it's a heavily impasto surface, then you wouldn't put anything on that face. Um, the other thing, you have to make sure that, and if you see here, they're, fa they're face to face, and then these ones are back to back. Now, this isn't the same height, but it's only the wooden, you can see it here on this image better, it's wooden stretcher bar to wooden stretcher bar. Yeah. If that was face to face on canvas, like, you know, this, what you might end up with is an impression across here, or the canvas stretching and sagging. Gloves. So that's the other thing around art handling gloves. So why do we wear gloves? Obviously because of the oils and salts on our hands. The other thing though is dirty gloves are just as bad as hands. So if you don't have gloves, you can wash your hands regularly as well. So we're all familiar with the old uh, Mickey Mouse white cotton gloves and they're fantastic because they're reusable but then they're no good for things that are heavy because obviously the cotton is, creates a non-grip non surface and can slip. So really you should always be supporting the object or artifact from the base and the side like this. So here's an example of cotton, which is great, nitrile, so they're surgical or dentist buffs. You can get them fairly cheap, they're about $8 a box pack of a hundred and you just order them online from a surgical supply store. 
Then there's latex gloves. Now, <coughs> latex gloves are good because it's a renewable resource, but then the latex is not used with every single object. So latex has a higher sulfur content in it and shouldn't be used with ha when handling metals. So I just prefer <coughs> to not worry about having... And uh, people are more likely to be, if they have an allergy, uh, allergic to latex gloves than nitrile gloves. The nitrile gloves are sweaty. If you're in gloves all day, you can double glove. <laughs> so you can go up a size of the nitrile. So I, I would use a small nitrile glove by myself, by itself. But if I was in gloves all day, I'd put a cotton glove underneath and go up to a medium size and it's a lot more comfortable. Some of the nitrile and latex do have powder in it. Always get powder free. One of the other things is like cotton gloves, you know, if it had a rusty kind of surface that would catch things, then you'd prefer to get a nitrile glove. Heavy things, nitrile's great because it actually helps grip a little bit. Having said that, um, things like heavily oaked objects, nitrile gloves are bad because it, they do tend to take more of the, the um, pigment off. Moving the object, check it out, is it, has it got any moving or detachable parts? If it's got moving parts, you sometimes need to stabilise those parts before they're moved. The other thing, if it's detachable, teacup and saucer. You wouldn't lift it up from the saucer and carry the teacup balanced on the top. You would separate the two out and carry them individually. The other thing is before you need to think about it, is how, you know, occupations to health and safety considerations is how heavy is that object. And sometimes if you have heavy objects in your collection, before you put them in the collection store or wherever, don't put them directly on the ground, put them on a pallet or something like that so you can come in with a pallet jack to move it so you never have to actually physically manhandle that work again. Handling paintings. So as I've said, I've, I've said it a lot, always from the side and, and supported like this. This is a large oversized painting and these men are actually handling it on the travelling frame. So if you've got large oversized things, keep it in its travelling frame or as a support for as long as possible before you put it up. The other thing when you move paintings is look at the verso of the painting, the back of the painting, before moving it in case the keys from the, the um, stretcher bar have fallen out and fallen in between the stretcher bar and the canvas. It's a good time to check that. Um, and then when we move paintings or artworks, we never actually put them directly on the ground. We always put them on padded blocks and we do that. It's preventative conservation once again. Um, if there's a small plumbing hazard, then that work is not going to get wet. So, you know, for here, for example, and the tap blocks or and the floor gets wet, so it'll be fine. Or if there's a roof leak or the thing flood, you just put the plastic over it out of your disaster kit and you know it's going to be pretty safe because it's not sitting directly on the floor. And also just to stop it from getting grimy. When you are also moving painting, it's really strongly recommended that when you lean them up against the wall, it's always face out. The other thing, assess the surface of the painting. You know, is it heavily cracked wood? Is, it, is, it, is there any lifting painting? The briefcase hold. Never pick, pick the frame up from the top. <coughs> no matter how much you want to. Even if it's just, uh, just a little bit. No, because the, you know, the, the mitre joints are the weakest point of the frame and it's very easy for that thing to drop out. Blocks, blocks, blocks. Now, if you don't have blocks, so I'm saying painting should always be placed on padded blocks. If you have the principles of best practice, you can work for, you know, you don't need exactly all the same things. You can work to the principles of best practice with what you have. One of the things that I find most nerve-wracking to handle is works on paper. Get a stiffer support material. Yeah, so um, like with this, Say this is just my special support material and this is my artwork. And then I might just slip that underneath, put my gloves on like this, and then carry it like that. Mm -hmm. A large oversized works on paper. This is called slinging. They're slinging it. Because you often, if you need to go through doors. So this thing takes quite a lot of communication 
with your fellow installer to sling a large work on paper like this because you want to make sure that that doesn't happen. So you've got to kind of be really like watching the child yeah. moving around. Trust you. Quickly assessing this object, you can see. Like even they say this one as well, but I, we can improve on this. You know, one thing is, I wouldn't wear those gloves, even though she's assessed that she is supporting it, so it's not really going to slip, but does that lid come off? You know, um, those types of things. The other thing um, that you see is you never pick an object up by its handle. Always support it from the sides and the back.